Hello, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Customer Engagement in the Age of Digital Transformation. My name is Peter Williams, and I'm the Global Technology Lead for AWS Financial Services Partners, and I'll be your host and moderator for today's presentation. In addition to learning about AWS, we'll also hear from Manish Patak, Product Management Director of FICO, and Steve Hendrick, Research Director at Enterprise Management Associates. Today's agenda includes, first, re reviewing challenges in the financial services industry. Then, we'll hear about FICO's marketing solution suite. Then, we'll learn about how AWS plays a part in the digital transformation we're seeing in financial services. And finally, we'll have a Q&A. So let's review learning objectives for today. We'll learn how to use customer data to predict future behavior, how to predict how predictive analytics can be used to create user profiles for real-time interactions, how outbound and real-time customer interaction can be modeled to create a single campaign, and finally, the core benefits of using AWS. And now I'd like to introduce Steve Hendrick, Research Director at Enterprise Management Associates. Okay. Hey, thanks very much, Peter. I'd like to set some context about digital disruption in the financial services and banking industry. So technology and market factors are usually the key drivers of disruption across most vertical industries. This is especially true for retail banking over the last 100 years, where a physical brick and mortar presence was the only real path to revenue generation. But this is changing rapidly now due to technology and market factors. Mobile phones, custom tailored services, and the generational transformation from boomers to Gen X and millennials is changing how banks operate. Banks also have to worry about regulatory concerns, the economy, and talent management. However, the solution to all of these issues tends to involve technology. Now, technology and market factors are powerful forces that are now changing the banking industry. The market factors on the left side of your screen are all linked to people. People's expectations and requirements are changing as a result of technology. People are responsible for defining bank policy, business processes, and making decisions regarding how banks should better align with market needs. But people and their expectations are changing as well. Now, the technology factors on the right side of the screen really need no introduction. But the reason the stage has been set for digital transformation and disruption is that all of these technology factors are less than 20 years old, and most of these technologies have only matured in the last 10 years. And I think Ferris Bueller would have said, technology moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around, you could miss it. So the banking and financial services industry is now undergoing disruption as new modern services become available that are really quite different from existing retail bank services and highlight just how antiquated these older bank services can be. The good news is, though, that studies have been done to assess how ready a vertical industry is to address digital transformation. And the good news on this slide is that banking is number two on the list. Now, the readiness for digital transformation is confirmed by banking executives, 87% of which feel that innovation is somewhat or very important. However, since only 11% of these same executives believe that they are well prepared to address innovation, this means that technology adoption, decision and process automation, and organizational change are likely to be very challenging. Now, the primary market factor facing banks is changing customer demographics. Boomers are aging and exiting the workforce. Gen X is holding pretty steady and millennials are entering the workforce. Millennials will make up more than 50% of the workforce by 2020, and millennials, as you can see on the right side of the screen, are tech savvy and view banking services as easily interchangeable. So the real question that this presents to us then is why innovation matters. With 50% of the US population owning smartphones and the percentage much higher for millennials, Banks will need to not only change the way they offer services, but also seek to understand their customers in much deeper ways. With 81% of adults using mobile banking by 2020, and almost a third of smartphone users who will be changing brands if they can't find what they want, 
easily within a couple of minutes. Banks have to do a much better job of understanding their customers down to markets of one. Banks also need to offer a wider variety of compelling and competitive services that can be easily tailored to the exact needs of individual customers. So here are a few examples of threats that exist in the banking market and effective solutions that I've seen by banks. Technology is rapidly eliminating branch banking. The solution is to provide more multi-channel services that are 20, 24 by 7 by 365, and in many cases, bank customers are not even aware of what services a bank provides. Therefore, it's really important for banks to establish a trusted and valued relationship with their customers and present their customers with relevant services and offers. Banks also need to manage risk in more sophisticated ways. Now, the best way to do this is decision and process automation that is actually a far more precise way to assess eligibility or credit risk and make offers based on more accurate risk profiling. Assessing eligibility can require hundreds or even thousands of decision rules, which makes decision management services a necessity. At the same time, assessing eligibility for millions of customers and prospects is a clear use case for reliable, secure, and scalable cloud services. And finally, banks need to better understand their customers and prospects and transition from a product and service strategy to a customer-centric strategy where each customer's situation and needs are understood and addressed. The solution to this involves a combination of advanced analytics, decisioning, better marketing services, and eventually machine learning. Now, to hear more about digital transformation and marketing solutions, I'd like to pass control of the webinar to Manish Bathak, Director of Product Management at FICO. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Um, pretty powerful stuff um, that's happening in our industry right now. But before we actually take a look at marketing solutions suite, what, uh, what we can take a look at is a few of the mar emerging trends that are coming up when it comes to marketing in this age of digital transformation. We use this uh, trends, we, uh, we track these trends and, and teams closely uh, that guide our product strategy here at FICO as well. All right, so first, as Steve mentioned earlier, there is uh, digital transformation is driving this changing demographic, customer demographic. And when you think about the digital consumer of this age, the path to engagement of this digital consumer is frankly uh, quite different and, and unpredictable. There is also a, a lot of content that's available to uh, the current consumers uh, due to the uh, due to the devices that are uh, that they use for uh, for their engagements, which is constantly available. So these are always on interactions. When it comes to um, engaging with their financial institutions, the consumers expect their financial institutions to understand their and anticipate their future needs and deliver them personalized content. And there's also a, a very big emphasis placed on, on customer experience as well. In fact, Gartner published an article in 2016 where they talked about how customer experience is the next competitive battleground. And I think as Steve mentioned earlier, these, these consumers are not afraid or not, do not shy away from switching providers if they can't find what they want. And of course, the need for real-time interactions is again uh, something that is uh, the new norm. And, uh, uh, and, and being able to handle is actually important from a marketing standpoint. Uh, and lastly, uh, but not the least, of course, predictive analytics is again becoming a, a must-have, as Steve mentioned earlier. Uh, essentially, these digital touch points generate a, a large amount of data, and it's important to be able to analyze that data to understand uh, and anticipate customers' needs. And that, honestly, is not possible with the amount of data that's available uh, to be done manually. So machine-driven optimization uh, becomes another key factor. It's almost a must-have. Let's take a look at a couple of these trends a little bit in, in, in a little bit more detail. The first we're going to talk about is the rise of the digital consumer. Now let's take a couple of uh, take a look at a couple of stats here. So Comscore uh, did a survey of uh, the engagement across different age groups, and no surprises here. Uh, as you can see, the millennial uh, generation is uh, more adept to using um, mobile phones, whereas uh, the older population has more preference towards desktop. But what's interesting is how much of that percentage is actually multi-channel or cross-channel where, where they're using both uh, the mobile touch points as well as uh, more traditional touch points. And 
Forrest report um, that came out last year that confirms it, that almost 60% of these customer journeys or buying journeys in the financial space actually are in fact cross-channel, which means that the uh, the purchase decision originated on a, on a digital touch point and could end up on another touch point. So for, as a marketer, it's very important to understand what that customer is is doing or how they are engaging across different different devices. And as Steve mentioned earlier, the uh, the bank branch is no longer a differentiator for some of these banks. So uh, essentially, there was a, there was a survey study where 40% of the U.S. consumers have not even stepped into a bank branch in six months. 2017, as you know, was a record year for bank branch closures across U.S. and Europe. And I was in um, Brazil a couple of weeks ago. And they confirmed the same thing. I've talked to a few big banks over there, and they actually had the same same kind of inclination towards, hey, it's becoming more like a, a, a prohibitor or cost inhibitor for us to actually have a local branch. The next is uh, about understanding or having a deeper understanding of your customer and how that is becoming, uh, that is actually a key, key ingredient for building loyalty when it comes to banking services. Now, Accenture actually uh, published a banking report uh, in 2017 where around 70 to 80 percent of the customers, consumers actually feel the relationship with their bank is more transactional and is, is not personal. So why is that? It's important that these banks actually understand their customers to, to make sure that they can actually have a relationship based, an engagement based on relationship rather than a transaction that has just occurred on a, on a single uh, account that the customer might have. Now, 46% of the millennials don't, don't think that their banks actually understand their future needs and they don't market to them effectively. In fact, FICO did a survey back in 2015 where we found that 70% of these consumers or millennials are actually open to receiving more offers from banks if they are personalized. On the flip side, if you look at financial institutions, what's happening is financial institutions are actually admitting that they are unable to deliver a higher level of personalization. They're actually delivering, in fact, zero or basic personalization to their uh, current consumers. So are banks just oblivious to what the customer demands are and they just don't understand what's, uh, how to approach them? Actually, that's not true. In fact, majority of the marketers in the financial sector actually uh, do feel it's important to enable better customer experience. They actually want to focus on that. But there are some challenges that they need to overcome. So let's take a look at a few of those challenges here. Now, the first challenge, of course, is the data deluge. U.S. consumers produce 2.6 million gigabytes of data per minute. That is a large amount of data. And what's happening is all this data is coming in through all these different uh, channels, and they, are, they end up in different or fragmented systems across the enterprise. So essentially, there is no way of bridging that data together to build that customer view so you can have a relationship with, their, with, with, the, uh, with the customer. What that's also enabling is that less than a percentage of that data is actually analyzed. We talked a lot about the, the multi-channel journey or, or cross-channel journey of these customers. And it's, it's important uh, to understand that as a marketer, it's important to understand what's happening on each particular channel, bringing that data together so we can understand what the customer wants and, and needs and essentially be able to kind of respond to that customer in real time. Of course, customers also demand always on interaction. So may, being able to kind of address their, uh, their needs in real time is another key factor uh, when it comes to marketing in the financial services sector. But lastly, only 50% of marketers actually plan to increase budget for data science in 2018. That is honestly uh, a very low, no low number according to us. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's an option anymore. The amount of data that, you, that is available to analyze, it's, it's important to actually invest in, in, in sound analy analytics or machine-driven analytics to, to make sure um, that you understand and anticipate uh, what the customer wants and actually be able to address their needs for personalization. So it's actually um, uh, not, no longer a nice to have. So let me introduce you to a tool, uh, the FICO Marketing Solutions Suite. Now, Marketing Solutions Suite is a tool built for the digital marketer, and uh, it addresses the need for innovation in marketing processes. It's a data-driven and scientific approach to handle challenges that marketers face in this age of digital transformation. Marketing Solutions Suite allows marketers to bring in data from various sources across their organization and create this 360-degree view of the customer that they can then use for personalization. You can generate actionable insights from that particular that data and then use, that, use those insights to guide or inform your marketing strategies. 
marketing solution suite also kind of puts the power back in the marketer's hands because marketers have this easy to use, simple to use tools, and we'll actually take a look at the tool in, in a bit, but being able to map customer journeys across time and channel, being able to map uh, outbound communications or more traditional uh, campaigns uh, versus real time, uh, being able to model real time interaction. And again, ma manage a, a, a history of those transactions or those engagements and use the responses from those engagements to guide your marketing further. It actually uh, increases organizational agility because it actually uh, makes marketing more self-sufficient so you can actually have better utilization across your valuable resources. So marketing solution suite actually uh, has four key components to it. First is the real-time experience manager. Real-time experience manager is a component that allows marketers to, to design real-time interactions and leverage uh, real-time analytics and also has a powerful content engine that can allow you to personalize in real time, dynamically, every single interaction that you're having with your customers. The second one is the customer dialogue manager, which is essentially a tool for your traditional marketer where you actually have your outbound or batch campaigns that are set up in advance, and you can set up these easy workflows that allow you to kind of go through every single life cycle stage of that customer and be able to have those multi-wave communications uh, in a more structured manner. But again, it also has a, 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 a content engine that drives and makes sure that every single communication that goes out through those outbound channels is also personalized. Market and Message Director essentially is that powerful content engine that allows you to bring in data or content from multiple different sources in, in a single place. You can manage all that content in a single place. And it, you can build uh, something we call content blocks. And out of content blocks, you can actually have templates. So you actually have these building blocks that allow you to put together a communication that can go out to a customer. And if you send like uh, 100,000 emails, each of those 100,000 emails could, could end up looking differently based on customer's preference and customer's interests, et cetera. And last but not the least is the customer data integration. Customer data integration is uh, a simple tool that allows marketers, again, to, uh, to bring in data easily from any data source, whether it be batch, whether it be on a real time, um, or an offline data source. Essentially, you can schedule jobs, and we'll, we'll take a look at the tool in a little bit and, and show you how easy it is to bring that data and create a consolidated or 360 degree view of the customer that can then be used for personalizing every single interaction with them. So with Marketing Solution Suite, what you have is really an engine that is uh, analytic, uh, engine for analytically driven personalization. You have the data ingestion, data integration part, which is essentially bringing in data from batch sources and capturing real-time interactions. Your customer data, where you have a historical profile of the customer with every single interaction that you've had with them, and a real-time operational store to store the context of that real-time interaction. And real-time interaction, um, the contextual store then also feeds the customer profile as well to make sure that your history of the customer is always there. And then you can use that data to guide your outbound campaigns or real-time interactions, uh, essentially your marketing workflow. And then Message Director is the content engine that powers each of those personalization. However, Marketing Solutions Suite leverages FICO's flagship decision management suite. Now, decision management suite is an extremely powerful tool that allows you to bring in uh, your uh, data models or analytical models from within your, uh, which, are, which were either developed in-house by your analytical, uh, analytics team, or you can actually create um, uh, models very easily in decision management suite. You can actually use business rules to kind of guide your decision process and also use machine-driven optimization. The integration of Marketing Solution Suite and Decision Management Suite creates a powerful combination that allows you to then leverage those real-time, uh, leverage analytics in real-time, capture that data, and then use that in your marketing workflow, right? We are also working on the next best action engine, which is essentially going to be, how do I make sure that uh, when, when I capture the context, how does, how does that context power uh, the next interaction that I'm going to have in real time with my customer. So that is coming out later in the year and uh, also allows you to kind of bring in your third party analytical models and, and, and kind of use that in combination with your campaign workflows to be able to uh, have that personalized and bring a scientific approach to, to your marketing campaigns uh, while keeping the power again in the marketer's hands. All right, so we're going to take a look at the product itself. We're doing a quick dry run now. I've created a video for us to take a look at, essentially uh, because of the shortage of time uh, we have today. 
Uh, but I, and again, I didn't want to waste time in terms of, uh, uh, you know, just trying to do this in real time. Although what you're going to see is real time use of the tool. We did not, we did not speed up the video and it shows you how easy it is to actually use the tool to really create ve very quickly create campaigns and, 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 um, and, and bring that. And this system is actually live in AWS cloud right now. All right. So let me go ahead and start and play that. So first, we're going to take a look at the data ingestion capability and see how easy it is, it is to bring data in. So we have this tool called CDI Self-Service or Customer uh, Data Integration. Uh, we uh, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a job that allows me to bring in data. Now, I can actually create an ad hoc job, which is uh, a job or recurring job, which can be scheduled or actually can be, they can pull a data source. I'm going to, for, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to say ad hoc job. I'm going to start naming my job. It's actually customer model score. So these are model scores which are generated by my analytics team, and I'm going to st start bringing them in. I'm going to select the feed, uh, a data feed, and I'm going to say I'm going to upload a file from my local file system for now. Um, so I'm going to select upload. I'm going to create, um, select a file name, and I can also decrypt that file if that file was encrypted uh, through this particular tool. Once the data is in, once the data is actually ingested, I can actually preview that data before the ingestion actually happens. And as you can see, <clears throat> I can preview to make sure, sorry, uh, everything looks good. Once that is, uh, once I'm satisfied with how the data is coming in, I can actually go to the transformation step where I actually have the ability to kind of um, configure basic transformations which are already built in. But at the same time, I can also um, create my own transformation function or transformation rule and actually I can transform that data while the data is being ingested. Once everything looks okay, I'm going to go ahead and start mapping this data. Now, I already have, we already have a standard data model. However, the data that I'm, that I'm bringing in is slightly different. So it's actually an extension to the standard data model. Here, I'm going to also, uh, so, so essentially I'm actually creating this customer profile and I'm actually bringing in data and I'm actually tying it back to the customer. I'm going to update an insert for now, and then I'm going to select a key, and my key for now is going to be email, but I can select any other key, essentially, uh, to map a customer record across. Now, the uh, CDI is intelligent enough to actually already map most of the, most of the fields here to the uh, fields in the existing standard data model. However, it's not able to find the home phone, and it's saying it's not, not mapped, but the home phone actually is part of the standard data model, so I'm going to go ahead and edit that. And I'm going to say, yes, it's actually part of the standard data model. And it's actually called contact phone instead of home phone. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to click Save. Once I save this, now uh, my data is ready to ingest. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give some more information to see if I, have, I want to be notified if the job fails or uh, job succeeds. Uh, and I take a look at it. Now I can also take a look at the source code and uh, see an XML of the data being ingested. So next time I can just use that uh, instead of going through these steps. Um, go ahead and let's create this job. When I create this job, I'll be able to see this in my, uh, in my jobs view, and I can then select an action to execute that job to make that data available for uh, my campaigns. So here's the job I just created. Now we're going to go take a look at the, uh, the uh, customer dialogue manager or, or, or traditional marketing campaign. I've already created some campaigns here for us to take a look at. We're going to take a look at one of them in particular, which is account-based, account-driven marketing, so automated account-driven marketing. So this is essentially taking the cues from your account management, uh, essentially uh, triad, for example, and then using that to, to create a marketing campaign. Now I have I can set up uh, I can bring in the audience and actually set up audience filters. When I look at one of the audience filters, I have access to this powerful query builder tool, which is simple and easy enough, and you can actually use all the data that you brought in and create really precise segments. What I'm doing also here is I'm actually creating uh, a champion challenger type campaign or uh, essentially an A/B test campaign. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm actually distributing 10% traffic among different audience filters and, 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 uh, and the tool is intelligent enough to say 80% of the traffic goes to the winner. So we are constantly analyzing the data that's coming in and making sure that the winner always gets the rest of the traffic. Let's take a look at uh, the, the real-time campaign for a second. So this is a Summit Bank website. It's a dummy site that we created for demo purposes. And we also have 
uh, created a few real-time campaigns that we can actually take a look at. We're going to take a look at one in particular, which is uh, for generating real-time offers that uh, when the when the customer comes to that website, how do you how do you present them with real-time offers? Here, um, uh, you can see that this is already looking a lot different than your traditional marketing campaign. This is more of a free flow because this is modeling real-time interaction rather than uh, an outbound campaign, which is more structured in uh, in its uh, in its uh, operations. Um, we take a look at the decision services. The decision services, this is really where uh, you can actually bring in data from um, data from uh, your decision management, your analytics essentially. Uh, and as you can see here, you, you have the ability to kind of read or write to database in real time or data store, contextual data store in real time. And you also can call uh, we also have this pre-configured modules that can uh, um, that can be configured further to kind of leverage uh, your uh, analytical scores from decision management suite or the analytical scores that you have built in-house. Um, we also have this concept of gateways and the gateways are essentially once you start, once you get the model scores, how do you actually act on them? So you, you can actually have a, a tranche set up, for example, if the score is between 5 to 10, do this, or, and, and if it's uh, between 11 to 20, do this. Um, or you can actually uh, have a distribution distribution gateway which can distribute traffic, uh, uh, split traffic uh, programmatically, randomly between uh, different paths you can take. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Now, if you notice, I've actually have um, I've actually have a, a developer toolkit uh, toolbar here on the right hand side just to show you the calls being made in real time um, to the real time experience manager. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and log into this website. Uh, once I log in, as you see in the, on your right hand side, the calls are actually be, uh, went to the real time experience manager, captured the context and comes back. This is my landing page. Now I'm going to click on see my offers. When I do that, I'm making a real time call to the experience manager and getting these offers. These are offers which are personalized to my interest, my preference and my current account standing rather than uh, generic offers. These are actually coming in real time. Now, for now, I think these are, are uh, you can actually have uh, uh, the real time experience manager call uh, DMS or uh, decision management suite in real time, get the offers and then show them over here. Right, now if you go back to the real time experience manager, I forgot to mention this, but if you saw this was actually executed 44 times, and now you see this is actually being uh, executed 45 times. Now, uh, the video is not very clear, but uh, I have bad eyesight as well, so <laughs> hopefully your eyesight is better than mine. Um, so essentially, uh, as you as you see, I mean, this is really um, an, very easy to create. Now, we showed you a couple of templates of of the of the different uh, different tools. Again, I gave you a nickel tour. I know I went really fast, uh, so I apologize for that. But essentially, uh, I just want to make sure that we have a quick preview. Please do let us know if you want to see a full demo of this. Uh, we also uh, glossed over quite a few nuances. Uh, and most importantly, uh, taking a look at uh, DMS itself, the decision management suite itself, where we can actually show you how you can actually um, uh, build your decision, uh, decision criteria in real time and actually ingest those scores back into your marketing suite, but we'd love to kind of um, um, show you that a little bit in, in more detail. So please do let us know. And then last slide, last slide I have is essentially um, when, when it comes to financial industry, FICO does a lot of business with financial industry, and, and we have tools and applications which are being used by uh, majority, if not most, of the um, large banks and small banks and, uh, and financial institutions across uh, across the globe. We actually have marketing solutions which are specific to financial industry as well. So the first and foremost, I think what the one we talked about is the marketing solution suite. Of course, it's a data-driven, highly scientific approach to uh, create high-value uh, customer interactions. But then we also have this new service that is launching within a month, uh, which is called FICO Prescreen Now, that allows you to qualify or pre-approve customers in real time using bureau data and your common decision framework, uh, which is used across your um, other um, uh, customer life cycles. You can uh, engage customers in real time, essentially through online mobile app or phone or branch. If somebody calls it to a branch, uh, you can make the quick call to pre-screen now and figure out what uh, other services that, per uh, that uh, particular customer is essentially pre-qualified for or pre-screened for. 
and then you can uh, increase the lifetime value of that customer. We also have uh, the risk aware acquisitions or prospect database where we can actually create a marketable universe uh, of uh, for you uh, to run your invitation to apply your pre-qualified offers. Uh, it, it has a flexible processing framework. You can actually bring in data from third party sources. It allows you to kind of create campaign segmentation uh, and also has ability to kind of capture the performance history back from those uh, those campaigns and and um, uh, create ad hoc reporting. And we also have closed loop automated account based marketing, which is essentially uh, integration, easy integration with triad or strategy director or blaze advisor and uh, being able to kind of drive your marketing uh, based out of the output from uh, from from these uh, FICO products. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to Peter, who's going to talk about why we chose AWS, why FICO and AWS such a uh, such an important partnership for us. Thank you, Manish. Um, that was that was great to actually see the the demo of uh, the product. A lot of times, that really helps crystallize um, the, the kind of innovation that um, that you're working on to see it in action. Why the cloud? You know, let, let's think about why are we talking about AWS uh, in this context? The financial services move to the cloud is really accelerating faster than ever. Uh, organizations want to transform their business to be much more agile and responsive to customer needs. Agility is really uh, the primary reason that customers cite for moving to the cloud. There's a lot of other reasons. Sometimes cost is, is a driver. Um, but the, the agility factor, the ability to uh, quickly spin up servers when needed um, and, and use services to do the undifferentiated, what we call undifferentiated heavy lifting, so companies can use services for things like redundancy and encryption and focus their energy and time on features that really differentiate their business. The infrastructure in the financial industry has really grown organically over the last 30 years, and has largely been built on monolithic architectures. In retail, for example, new digital channels and innovative apps have been added to monolithic core banking systems, which has increased the complexity of infrastructure over time. On the wholesale banking side, a proliferation of new products during the golden era before their financial crisis and a low priority of cost management have equally increased complexity. It's a little bit like a Borg ship. As a consequence, banks face the high cost of maintaining this complex infrastructure. More than two-thirds of IT budgets go, go towards keeping the lights on. It's also expensive to implement regulatory requirements into old legacy infrastructure. A large percentage of change of budget, is, if not all of it, goes into regulatory compliance. Cost reduction programs for IT and operations are only reducing costs at the fringe, really not tackling the underlying issues with this sort of monolithic infrastructure. And the focus on regulatory change and complexity of infrastructure constrain the ability of financial institutions to innovate. And innovation is slow. For all these reasons, financial institutions find it hard to drive digital transformation. Uh, a recent survey by McKinsey talked about financial services being perceived as the, the third least digital industry, only trailed by automotive and consumer goods. So the benefits of the cloud help them to address this challenge as we've just discussed. Structurally lower the cost base, so eliminate costly technical debt, reduce the cost of running the bank and make, make changing the bank easier, and allowing you to reallocate resources to delivering high value revenue generating projects faster. Innovate faster. Meet the digital challenge by experimenting more, failing fast, and bringing new ideas to the market quicker. The cloud enables true agile DevOps, and it can help you solidify your competitive advantage by merging startup agility with enterprise experience and resources. So that, that's really the crux of it, that ability to, to start up services and capabilities, try new things, and if they fail, shut them down and try something different. Uh, that that's really the, the the secret to innovation. Find new sources of growth. The cloud is a highly scalable infrastructure that you can use to build analytics that matter to the industry and help identify opportunities to increase wallet share. 
scaling new ideas globally becomes a lot easier. And in a minute, we're going to see a global map of uh, capabilities uh, and where our resources and, and regions of AWS um, are across the globe. And finally, reduce risk. Address existing control issues with better tools and better data. Uh, one example would be CloudTrail. AWS CloudTrail is a service that maintains a record a log of any calls made to any AWS service. So adding a, a login or um, setting up a, a storage uh, bucket. Any of those calls are logged in a central place, so it can be tracked later. Build a compliant control environment in, in line with your risk appetites, as well as your internal policies um, in a much simpler way. AWS uses the latest technologies to enhance information security, and you can focus resources dedicated to security, compliance, and availability to the most important areas of your business. So now we'll take a look at that map. Um, AWS provides lots of options for global deployment. Gartner estimated that AWS has significantly more compute capacity than all other major cloud providers combined. And we do that while providing extremely high reliability. Um, you can see here, we currently provide 18 regions and 52 what we call availability zones, or AZs. For us, a region will always contain at least two AZs on wholly separate power grids and floodplains. And an AZ is always comprised of multiple data centers. So you've got redundancy within that AZ. We don't build single data center regions because it wouldn't offer the reliability that's required for enterprises businesses. This highly available global network allows you to deploy your applications near your customers much faster and simpler than what can be achieved with a traditional model. So financial institutions trust AWS to transform their businesses, whether it's in banking and payments, capital markets, or insurance. Enterprises like these around the globe trust AWS to support their needs. AWS is also the first choice for fintech startups. 96% of the Forbes Fintech 50 use AWS. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the audience and start taking questions. I see that we actually have uh, quite a number of questions. And Manish, I think uh, many of them uh, are directed at some of the um, slides that you had earlier. Manish, this this says, um, I agree that, that deadlage of data available today for analysis is a powerful source to arrive at data-driven decisions for marketing and services. However, how do we address the data privacy issues associated with a, such extensive use of customer data? Does FICO address that in any form? Thank you. That's a Excellent question. In fact, at FICO, we take data privacy and security very seriously. Essentially, uh, financial institutions across the world trust us in, in making or enabling their decision practices across customer lifecycle. In fact, risk, compliance, uh, account management, etc. We definitely make sure. However, there are customers who, who absolutely understand uh, uh, how, why uh, they want to make sure that their, their data is secure. What we have here is a secure system. We actually are working on uh, working with AWS on best practices. We actually go through their well-architected review, which is a rigorous review which tests applications on multiple different levels. We also have in, uh, incorporated multiple different privacy practices within the product itself. Now that is just talking about the data security, make sure your data is secure. On the privacy stuff, I mean, there's a, there is a long-standing debate in terms of what is uh, enabled uh, uh, in terms of when you're actually contacting the customer, how much you can actually share, etc. So when you take a look at uh, a product like Prescreen, we actually do Prescreen. However, we follow all the guidelines from Pindra uh, and make sure that uh, any of the communication going out to the customer, so we actually make sure that our customers, are, uh, our clients essentially are always protected in their communication with their customers. We also address uh, some of our clients actually make sure that uh, they actually don't want to give us transaction data because of how our CDI uh, is, is designed. They can send us um, um, uh, an aggregates of those transactions back to our marketing. So for guided marketing, we actually do take some, some of the customers actually are open to sharing transactions. 
and some of the customers are actually open to keeping transactions on their side, whereas giving us the marketing profile of the customer so we can address that. We also have many different customers uh, who have been concerned about privacy in the past, but once they started working with us, they do understand and they actually uh, are open uh, in, in sharing the data. Great. Thank you. Another question is around blockchain. And the question is, blockchain is increasingly seen as a solution for KYC. Is FICO targeting that? I'm going to see if, uh, uh, is Eugene, are you still on the call? I'm going to see if Eugene has a better answer to that. Otherwise, I can, I mean, blockchain is absolutely uh, something that from financial standpoint, that is, uh, uh, that is critical. However, when, when we look at the marketing solution suite, we don't take a look at, uh, I mean, that's not something that we are looking at, but I think that might be uh, uh, more of a digital transformation trend that's affecting other areas in, in terms of banking services. So if Steve or Eugene can handle that, that'll be awesome. Yeah, so the question has to do with, um, uh, you know, blockchain is increasingly seen as a solution for the know your customer type solutions. Um, it was really focused around it, whether FICO is targeting that. And I can say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is increasingly a question that we get at AWS. It, there's been a lot of kind of proof of concepts done over the past couple of years. Uh, but I think we're starting to see some traction um, within uh, using the distributed ledger technology or DLT, which is what a lot of folks refer to uh, as, as blockchain. Um, my, my, my guess is that there, whether it's in this application or another area of the firm, uh, perhaps that, um, that, that the, the, this is certainly being looked at um, across the FICO organization. Absolutely, absolutely, it is. Yeah. Um, another, another question here, uh, do, you, uh, do you as FICO intend to act as the ad server to deploy content-driven data, or is your data available to deploy within DMPs or other ad servers? And the answer to that is yes. We are actually working on integrations. We uh, Digital advertising is definitely something that's on the roadmap. Currently, the product handles uh, mobile uh, uh, SMS push or, um, uh, or phone messaging, uh, a as well as uh, email, and we are working on social, which is coming out later this year. But absolutely, the idea is for Message Director to be that content engine that can be easily integrated with an ad server technology uh, and then push uh, your content out of the ad servers as well. And, and web personalization, we already handle web personalization, including landing pages, et cetera. So yeah, the, the answer to that is definitely something we're working on. Another question a bit related to that, I think, Manish, is uh, does the product integrate well with different streaming sources uh, or, or has its, or does it have its own streaming service? Fantastic question. In fact, FICO has a, a, a very, uh, very intelligent streaming product called uh, DMP Streaming. This is decision management platform streaming, not data management platform streaming. But uh, the, the the streaming uh, sir, uh, the streaming platform that we have is is really uh, uh, very innovative. One of the things that it does uniquely than other products is actually it can do streaming analytics. So while your data is uh, uh, being streamed, uh, you can actually run your analytics on top of that data and then pass that data down to a, a marketing solution suite. So yes, it doesn't, the marketing solution suite doesn't do that, but we actually in, ha, are uh, integrated very easily with this DMP streaming product that we have from FICO. We have, uh... Time for a, a few more questions, I think. Manish, I think this is for you again. Um, can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your customers and who is using your product? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Marketing Solutions Suite, we have quite a few customers across uh, United States, uh, Latin America, uh, Europe, and Asia that actually use marketing uh, services from us. Um, we, all, we also, along with uh, financial services, we also support clients in the pharma sector, clients in the life sciences. We also have uh, clients who are in the retail sector um, and, and, um, and telco. So our, our customers use our tool because, uh, because of its uh, ability to integrate with uh, uh, FICO ecosystem of products, essentially uh, uh, this in management uh, ser uh, suite, uh, DMP streaming, uh, and also Triad, Strategy Director, uh, Blaze Advisor. But we also have clients who have 
just the marketing solution suite and their own custom analytics where they actually bring in data. We have uh, within the financial sector, we actually support uh, a few major banks uh, across US and, and Canada and, and Europe. We also have few uh, financial institutions or processors which uh, use our product across Latin America and United States. And we also have uh, a few insurance companies. And we also work with uh, a few customers who have their own, uh, they actually provide, provide retail card services. And we have uh, quite a few customers, uh, a few customers over there that are actually using our services to, uh, um, to engage, their, uh, engage their retailers who, are, who they are actually working with. So it's a, it's a, a pretty interesting uh, group of products. So I can share more uh, the, the logo slide uh, on an individual basis as needed. Okay, great. An another interesting question. We already have an analytics capability in-house. Can mm -hmm. I bring my analytic models into marketing workflows? Absolutely. So FICO's approach to analytics is is uh, is this integrated and integrated analytics approach that allows to cl uh, clients to use their own analytics or third-party analytics. And through uh, uh, this in management suite, they can actually bring in that analytics and use that to inject into their marketing workflow. So absolutely, we have quite a few clients, especially in the pharma and uh, uh, and when it comes to large financial institutions, who have their own analytics teams. And they are using uh, our tool to kind of inject those um, those scores into the product, either in real time or in batch. And we actually saw both of those use cases in the product demo earlier. Okay, um, I think we are almost out of time, but I perhaps we have time for one or two more. What does the implementation cycle look like? Um, what if I want to migrate my marketing campaigns over to your platform? Yeah, so implementation cycle uh, is actually pretty um, uh, pretty concise, honestly. We, as being on AWS Cloud kind of allows us to provision uh, uh, infrastructure rapidly and also scale to our clients' uh, needs. So a typical implementation cycle could look, uh, uh, for, a, for a brand new implementation, could uh, look like between four to six weeks which is pretty good from, from a marketing vendor standpoint. We also um, are, have uh, our in-house services that can actually assist you in bringing your or porting your campaigns over uh, to our tool. Now those actually get into more customized engagements and uh, they could take a little bit longer. But again, I think the, the, the critical part is that uh, working as a partner with you to make sure to understand your needs and then trying to get that uh, uh, information ported over to Marketing Solutions Suite and making sure that you are up and running is the key that we look at all the, always. Great. Thank you, Manish and Steve, uh, yeah. very much. I think this is probably all the time we have uh, for today. Uh, that was that was very helpful. Just to uh, show you a couple of resources uh, to the audience. Uh, so just want to thank uh, Manish and Steve, as well as everyone who is who is dialed in for today's webinar. Uh, I hope it's been informative. Thank you very much, and uh, wish everyone a, a great day. Thank you, everyone.